Welcome to the Clean Slate Experience. Today we're talking with Sean Smith, friend of mine, about being a dadpreneur. How do we manage running our businesses, our marriages, our relationships, and our family? Did I even mention ourselves? That's critical, important to today's society. We're gonna get into it today. In our homes, I mean, we all could create whatever it is we want. You know what I mean? Whatever works for the family. So kind of quick, does, does Joe see, what was, if you had a conversation with Joe, like what would you rather, if you had a choice? The one thing that I've asked her to do most recently is, I said, Joe, like let's sit down and let's look at our budget mm-hmm. all over again, right? Mm-hmm. Let's look at what it is we need to manage our home to make sure that we're taking care of our kids, planning for their future, planning for our future. Like what does that number look like? Mm-hmm. And then we're looking at our different businesses and saying to ourselves, well, if we could put this on autopilot, this on autopilot, and pull X amount of dollars from each one to meet the number that budget is, mm-hmm. maybe we could do it. Because if we do that, I still free up 24 hours again, mm-hmm. and these things are running. They right. just gotta run well, right. you know what I mean? And now she is afforded the opportunity if she wants to. Mm-hmm. Now she loves what she does. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a decision that she would have to make whenever she chooses to make it. My role, this is what I'm looking at my role, is to create an environment where she gets to choose ah, if she wants yes, to, you know? Yeah. So, so yes. but right now, I mean, she loves what she does, man. She yeah. loves the company that she works for. She loves working with her team. Uh-huh. It's just, I'm just setting the stage in the event of anything. Because again, COVID happened. Thankfully, her employer, awesome as they were, mm-hmm. to keep so many of their employees on board. And she's working from home. She was working from home. Oh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, but she's working more from home. And when she's in the office, okay? In the middle of the night, I wake up and I see a glow in the corner. It's like, yo, you coming to bed? Right. Gotta finish out this email real quick. But nevertheless, man, again, she loves what she does. She does. Um, my job, I thought, or I think, is to just create the environment where we have options. How can I, as, you know, the man, do what I need to do so my wife has an option? And a lot of times... In marriages, they feel like, I don't have an option. I've got to yeah, go to I gotta work. work yeah. i got to go to work. Yeah. You know, and then you get involved in that. Dude, yeah, <laughs> listen, man. Listen, <clears throat> I was watching something on, or reading something on Facebook, and um, one of my friends, uh, Mike Felix, he's out of Orlando here. He's, he's talking about, he poses this question of how, what was it? It was something to the effect of, like, many small businesses don't create businesses out of it's like they're they're self-employed and they just keep it kind of small mm-hmm. and he, he mentioned something about there's like a percentage of people who or percentages of businesses that are that are only making x amount of dollars mm-hmm. and people don't want to go beyond that they're just mm. like like i'm comfortable right here yeah i don't want to go in anymore. my sweet zone right <laughs> one and then two somebody responded on there saying well maybe we find it easier working the nine to five Maybe we need to make it riskier to work the nine to five so that we'll be forced mm-hmm. to really develop ourselves. Mm-hmm. And it's a shame that we have to like make working the nine to five scarier versus are you working in your calling? Like are you are you doing as much as you possibly can? Or are you just settling because you see that two week check coming in and they don't know how difficult it is from an employer standpoint mm-hmm. to make sure that a two week check comes in? <laughs> because dude, <laughs> If you think the mortgage comes around fast, talk about every two weeks. Ooh, that payroll. Oh my God. That payroll. That payroll. That's the scariest thing for a business. Yo. I speak to my cousin in, in, in Maryland, man, I mean, uh, Clay, and he's like, Garen, yo, every two weeks, man, I got to make sure that X amount is in the bank ready for, for these folks. They don't understand, and they show up all haphazardly, you know, expecting you to pay them, but it's like they don't know how much stress is on us to... <laughs> Bro. I don't know what team you got or what team you're building towards, uh-huh, but uh-huh, it's uh-huh. um it's next level, man. It is, it is. That's scary, I, and that's going when you, someone has a small business. I think maybe that's the scary thing. Like, do I want to do more? Mm. I'm comfortable here with maybe the payroll I have, whether it's just me or yeah. me and one other person. Yeah. If I go bigger, that means the payroll gets. <laughs> But that also means that the opportunities and the and the, the your your revenue can also increase. Of course, that's you know? what that's what I mean. That's what I'm looking at. I'm right. looking at. Okay, you know, you want to hit that those those million dollar marks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 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 I think we look too much at the oh I got to pay out versus the opportunity mm-hmm. of what we can make, mm-hmm. man. If we multiply ourselves, multiply our time, and it requires a lot of work. So for me, I'm interested in the growth. I'm not looking at the numbers per se. I'm interested in who I will become as a result of expanding. 
doing these different things? Who am I becoming? And then what can I pass on to my kids? So who are you becoming? Oh, stop it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is what the topic is about, Sean. But, um, who are you becoming? Listen, man. I, I, that's, such, that's, that's a wide open question. Um, I'm... I'm mm, Mm. So, you know, I would, I, would, I would answer that question first through the people around me. Like, what are they seeing? Mm-hmm. You know, I, like on the inside, I, I know how, how I'm, I'm developing. I'm realizing, you know, I'm, I'm responding differently to certain questions. I'm, I'm able to, 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 to give answers to certain problems that I couldn't years past. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing the development. I'm seeing the growth. The question is, how are people viewing me? One of my, one of my employees, um, Jeff, older gentleman, I let him ride with me one day. So we're going to all different accounts. We're going to meet different vendors and so forth. And I said, every phone call I receive today, I'm going to put it on speakerphone for you to hear, except my wife, right? <laughs> so as the phone calls come in, press it, I'm talking. And he's seen how I'm interacting with the folks. He also, as we went to our vendors, where I get my shirts, Sinosaurus out of Castleberry, mm-hmm. um, he, as I walk in the door, I start like, hey, and everybody's like, hey, Garen. And he's watching this, watching this, watching this. And he's like, Garen, it seems like everybody likes you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why do you say that? And he goes on and tells me what he sees, what he notices with all the interactions from employees to vendors, suppliers, the whole night. I've been working hard, man, at understanding people, mm-hmm. learning people, mm-hmm. different learning styles, how people like to be spoken to, how they like to, all of that. I'm paying attention, taking notes, and I practice. Every time I come in front of him, I practice. So he's like, how is it that you're able to talk to so many different people with so many different personalities and you still get the same response where everybody's happy to see you? Mm-hmm. I don't think about it on a day-to-day basis, but I've been practicing. So, so again, who am I becoming? I'm seeing those, ty- those types of fruits. So do you, when you say fruits, the fruits and the way that people respond to you? Yes. The way that people respond to me and the way that I... I'm able to, it's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Who smiled first, uh-huh. me or them? Mm-hmm. When I showed up, I did something or they did something. Whatever it is, man, the interaction is one that's favorable. How can we do that again and again and again? But as a business owner, how do those interpersonal relationships affect your bottom line? Because like, your work is like, okay, I see Garen being nice to everybody. Right. Does that mean, does that affect how much he's bringing in or just because he likes being nice to everybody. Yeah. Now you're talking about employees now? Yes. So when your employee's watching, he's trying to model you. He sees, okay, everybody likes Garrett. Everybody is happy to see Garrett. But how does that relate to the person who says, okay, that's nice, but that that, that may or may not put you know money in the bank. Right. Okay, okay. Does it put money in the bank? So it does for me in this regards. So I look at my management style, my leadership style, and I think about some of the leaders that I've had and their leadership style. I've tried to model with them what I wanted them to model with our employees. Some of them have done that, some of them haven't. Mm-hmm. And I realize that, that quote that it says, like, people don't quit jobs, they quit managers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's real. Yeah. You know? Yes. So sometimes you give people, you know, too many keys to the house and they're <laughs> right. like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the boss. Right. That doesn't fly well with people, man. Mm-hmm. So I get to know my team like what's their motivation, Mm -hmm. why they're there, and I Mm -hmm. continue Mm -hmm. to connect them to that versus the title. I got you. So you want to provide a culture environment where people are excited. For their reasons. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. just like, here comes a cheerleader, Mm -hmm. Garen, who's like supporting them (laughs) on their their thing. I mean, nobody really like, I want to clean, I want to clean, but they're in a space where they, how's that coming? Uh You know, how are you doing with this goal of yours? Mm -hmm. I'm supporting that while we're working together. I don't know if this is a quote by Dr. King. It's like, well, if you're going to be, be, be a street sweeper, be the, be best, the best street sweeper. Yeah, you know that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facts. Facts. But I mean, that's, that's them working on integrity, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in their work, mm-hmm. in what they do. Because, again, that's them. That's not me telling them to be the best street, street sweeper. It's like, when you do something, how do you want it done? Like, right. talk to me. If right. I was working alongside you, what would you want me to do, you know? Yeah. One lady reached out to me the other day and she says, Garen, I have a friend who wants a job, who's looking for a job. I asked her the first question, I could pull up in my text. I was like, if you were having a stressful day, would you want that guy to be working next to you? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. She's like, no, Garen, yeah, no, he's good. Mm-hmm. I would want him to work next to me. I'm like, okay, we'll interview him. 
because she's vouching for somebody who may very well be her right. her partner. If he's not that good, she wouldn't want him. Now, once you get an employee, employee yeah. who you know works well with the team, is it then easy to train them what it is necessary for them to do to be a good worker, regardless of the relationships with their their team members? Yeah, so I pay attention to their relationship with their team members because if they're going to be, now are you talking about from if I'm filling a leadership role or just a coworker? To another coworker, first coworker to another coworker. Okay, so yeah, I um, mm, great question, great question. So coworker to coworker, I don't use that as, as the litmus test because sometimes those two individuals might they might just burn time, you know, because they ain't working. But I pay attention to their work ethic, mm-hmm. like what do they feel is important when it comes to work, and if they are respectful of the job, respectful of their teammates. Meaning, I'm not just going to call out because I want to call out, I'm going to consider Sean first. Like, mm-hmm. if I call out, man, he's going to have to work late tonight. Uh, if they're considerate of their team members, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Because because that's the biggest issue, man. Nowadays, the biggest issue is call outs. People have options. So right. they can just be like, eh. So you don't have like, oh man, you didn't do a good job on your assignment. I mean, do you get that problem a lot? Yeah, yeah. So, so when I show up on the job site, just say you're working, I'll uh-huh. be like, Sean, Tell me what you need. I see you working in here today. Tell me what you need. Mm-hmm. Like, no, Garen, I'm fine. Okay, so I'll say, well, how is it when you're cleaning the floor? So how is it when you're doing the drapes? Um, are you comfortable? Do you have all the tools you need? Mm-hmm. I'm going to, like, help them to think through because they're probably thinking, like, no, oh, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But there's something that they're probably not doing. Mm-hmm. So I go through the whole office to let them know <laughs> I understand the office. So when you got to get on top of the, the refrigerator, I know that you're a little shorter. Are you going to... How do you get up there? Yeah. Oh, well, Garrett, yeah, if I had a ladder, I could. Or if I had a longer pole, I could. Yeah. Okay, so you need a longer pole or a ladder. Okay, what else? I get into that whole mode, making sure that you have all the tools that you need. Right, right. If at the end of the day you have all the tools that you need, I'm clear with what the client is asking for, and you're on site, if the job doesn't get done, like, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. It's either tools, process, or people. Mm-hmm. If I give you the right tools, I've given you the right process, mm-hmm. then the problem is probably you. <laughs> and then the question is, so what do you think we should do next? So they get to decide You're whether right. or not they quit, walk away, or you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. give them everything that they need, man. So you can't complain. Yeah. Like, and many of the times I'm finding that people are the, the problem. When you when you saw about that, I was thinking about going back to family now. Okay. With my kids, I, I give them assignment. Yeah. Right. And I know what the assignment needs. Yeah. And they go, oh, daddy, I'm done with the assignment. And I know they haven't <laughs> requested what, what they you need. need. Yeah, yeah, talk to I'm me. I'm like, oh, the assignment's done? Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I come look. I was like, no, 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 no. You know, you didn't, you didn't sweep anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You didn't pack the dishes away. You yeah. didn't, I didn't hear any water. Right. Like, <laughs> no. And so we say two, what was tools. Process. Process. People. People. Yep. And so I look at that on my kids. First of all, you didn't ask for them. You didn't request any tools. Yeah. So I know you didn't utilize the right process because you need the tools to, to do, do the, the process. The right process, right. So no, you know, you're the problem. I can't fire my kids. Right, <laughs> understood, understood. <laughs> but at least you could go back and say, so where did you cut corners in the process? Yeah. This is what a difference between like having a, ha- uh, a family and a home government. So if I see that they mess up, I'm going to make them go back and do it. Okay. Sometimes my wife's like, ah, oh, I, I don't have time to tell them to fix it. And so then she will, because I was like, no, 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 you can't. Because you're taking it away from them. Right. Yeah. The other day I woke my kids up at 5.30 in the morning. Let's go. They can say, it's like, oh, the kitchen was, was not clean. And I said, well, should I let them stay up later to clean the kitchen? It's like, no, that's what they want to do. They want to stay up later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're like, no, I'm going to wake them up early. earlier. Say, yeah, time to get up. Let's they feel it, right? But did, did your, my parents used to tell me, if you don't listen, you're going to learn. You're going to feel. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> bro. So I think a way is that. So how do your kids learn? Like, I got one, I got two boys. Yeah. If I talk to them, if I, you know, sound disappointed, like, oh, you hurt daddy. Yeah. That's going to motivate them yeah. to do something right. Bro. My daughter, on the other hand, if I say do A, she's going to not do A because I've said to do A. Uh-huh. So she's pushing back that way. Yeah, yeah. So I've learned with her, I have to play reverse psychology. Mm-hmm. I say, Claire, don't clean up your room. <laughs> don't wash the dishes. You know, because if I say clean the room, like why? Why do I need to clean the room? Yeah. Why do? I, why can't I do what I want to do? You're not being a, a fair parent. Yeah. You're not giving me my autonomy. Why can't I have this toy or, or, yeah. or this item? Yeah. So now I don't. I don't argue with them. Yeah. Like, no. 
take what it is that you want. And then she gets nervous, like, oh, what's going to happen next? <laughs> Yo, that's funny because, yo, so a couple weeks ago, my wife was like, Garen, I need your help. I need your help, Garen. I need the help in the morning. I'm like, okay, talk to me. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, I would, you know, I would sleep a little bit later because I know that the kids know what they need to do. Yes. And I just get up and my wife is looking at me like, like this Negro. <laughs> you know? Not even helping me. Yo. Not so I said, you know what, me. let me come on and help. So I've been helping the past couple of days, making sure everything is, you know, square, checking in with her. Am I good? We good? Yes. All right. So she's getting into it, my oldest daughter, she, who just turned nine. <laughs> Same kind of issues, man. Um, and every morning, my wife is tired of like talking to them, talking to them, talking to them, to just do this and that. So I got up, and I woke them up. And I would go in, and I'm just like, okay, kids, it's time to wake up. Josie would come in, and she might start singing for them, or you know, <laughs> yes, just different things, yes, doing her thing. Yes. But sometimes it's a little, in my mind, it's a little louder than I would, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when the kids are just waking up. So I come in, I'm just rubbing them. Mm-hmm, good morning, mm-hmm. girls. Good yes, morning. Yes. It's time to get up. Even though they're still staying in base, time to get up. When yeah, they finally get up, yeah. I keep things really just chill. Yeah. I'll be washing dishes while Josie's helping with making their, their lunches, da da da. And the other day, my oldest, she was walking to her bathroom and she goes into the back bathroom and my wife is like, she hasn't been in there pretty long. Mm-hmm. Do you think she's, um, she's trying to spite us? I'm like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I said, leave it alone. Leave it alone. She comes back out really quiet mm-hmm. and she goes into her room and she does her thing at her pace. Mm-hmm. Granted, it wasn't at the pace that Josie wanted, yeah. but it was at her pace. That was one of the best mornings. We left her alone to just do her thing. Like she knew what needed to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was planning to jump in the truck and leave if she wasn't ready. Yes. Right? Yes. I'll probably go down the road and then t- turn around yes. and come back. Yes. But yes. I was willing to do all of that because she knows exactly what needs to be done. Right. So, not that I'm proving like to my wife that my way is better, but we're trying different ways, man, mm-hmm. because them kids, they, they try you, man. Dude, it's like, uh, it's like when you go to your your, your your door and you got a whole set of keys and you don't know which key works. Yeah. You oh, just got to try. Check it. Check try it. Out. Yeah. Try to, and that's how kids are, man. Being yeah. a parent, what 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 key works for one child ain't gonna work for the next. It's not gonna work for the other one. We're learning, man. Yeah, because that's what I'll do too. I'm like, if they ain't ready, what can I do? What's going to be the consequence? Yeah. But and it gives kids. It does give the children their autonomy. They don't have to do it my way. Right. They just have to do it, you know, the right way. Yeah. You know, get whatever that needs to be done. So, and I think a lot of times as parents, we try to say, no, you have to do it A B C D F G. Yeah. You need to yeah. do it in this order. And really, that's not the major worry. Yeah. I just want it done. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so I, I have to learn, I'm sure you do, have to learn to give them what they need. Give them the tools. Mm-hmm. A process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see what they then do. Let's see what they then do. You know? And I think that prepares them for, for, for life, man. I mean, we're in a world now where um, the way of doing things, I think employers are being a little bit more open, mm-hmm. realizing that there's different ways to skin the cat, different mm-hmm. ways to get certain things mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. So if we can teach them how to follow through. Yeah. On some process, man. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it has to be consequences if if it bombs. Right. Of know? course, that's the key. That's the key. I love it when I say to my kids, "All right, what time do you want to go to bed?" And it's like on a weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. time you want to go to bed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, ten thirty or eleven o'clock. It's like, well, you know what you need to have done in order for you to go to bed at that particular time. Yeah. Right, and so sometimes they'll wait, and it's like, all right, guys, you know, eleven o'clock is coming about an hour. We got to get this all done. I haven't done anything. I'm just sitting in my, you know, just watching, watching TV. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Instead of me saying, "Oh, go do this," yeah. and then if they don't get it done, say, okay, it's time for bed. But then on the other hand, when they, and sometimes I don't promise. I was like, if this is done, maybe I'll give you some more time. Okay. And so when eleven o'clock comes, they come. We have worship or whatever. And I think you know what. I'll give you another hour. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So they don't know when it's ever going to come. Right. It's your gift right, to them. Right, They'll ask. Yeah. And so, sometimes they get it. Most of the time, I'll give it to them. They're happy. But then I even do this. I'm like, listen, I'm going to give you the more time. But I don't want to have to come out there and say, hey, listen, time for you to go to bed. Yeah, you, you know. Be- <laughs> yep, yep. Yo, so, so this goes back to something that you said in the beginning, man, where you talked about if, if our kids have a poor relationship with God, it's a reflection on us. <laughs> But, and I'm seeing how you, and, and the Bible talks about this, I'm seeing how you, as an individual, gives your kid your kids good gifts. Yeah. Whether they're good or bad, you still love on them. Yeah. So that relationship that we should have with God, Right. so why then do we run from God? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> when we mess up, and just like, ah, I don't want to talk to him because I'm scared he's going to... Right, come down. As... Another thing, another example, talking about gifts. Yeah. 
my both of our kids go to the same school now, right? But at one point or not, they went to a different school. I remember I came to my kids and said, listen, you guys are going to go, going to go to a different school next year. Yeah. Oh, they were so sad. They was depressed. Mm. They was like, why we got to go to work on everywhere? Yeah, yeah. All this one. Now, I've done the research, talked to everybody I needed to talk to. You like, hey, what? what do you think about the school? It's like, yeah. nah, we're going we're gonna to move. And so I remember after, like, their first maybe month or so, them jokers Loving was it. so happy. Loving it. So happy. Like, hey, next semester's coming. Do you want to go back to the other school? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think what happens is like our, with, with God, God says, I've got something bigger better for you, you, something better for you. Son. But we're so happy with what we have. Why? why? Oh. <laughs> This brother's turned into, into an appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to you, Lord. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. And and I think I think because we're accustomed of what we've been always getting, we've gotten used to it, we figure like that's as good as it's going to get. Mm-hmm. The whole idea of faith, that there may be something, maybe, because he didn't guarantee it. And we, mm-hmm. a lot of us feel as though we deserve it. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it may be better. Um and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, man. Mm-hmm, you know, at least mm-hmm. for right now. Right, you know? right. And we right. gotta be, we gotta be comfortable to go through the ebb and flow of it all, man. To wait and just be patient, bro. And just be patient. <sighs> like in my business, man. I remember going to work. It's like, Lord, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. When are you gonna give me another opportunity? When are you gonna give me something different? Yeah. You know, I'm like, listen, I'll give up on the on the practice of law altogether. Shoot, I'll go teach or be a preacher something or something like that. Because yeah. I was just. You know, it's just in that position, like, I'm not happy. You know, I'm not. And how long am I not going to be happy? Yeah. And I guess I'm like at that point, like Joseph, where Joseph was in the prison. It's like, I'm not happy. But then when he got out, you're like, yo. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> yo. This is. Had you not is, waited, though. Right. Yeah. Not only am I out, like, I just wanted freedom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just wanted to be not in jail. I just want to be not in prison for something I didn't commit. I yeah. just wanted to be free. I got something more. Play. Not only are you going to be free, you're going to be the leader of, you know, the biggest nation in the world. You're yeah. going to run everything. You yeah. know, you're going to have it all. Yeah. And But it's when you're waiting and you're like, I don't see nothing but despair. Have you ever been there, man? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and listen, even as you were saying that, I was thinking about this whole idea of like, so if a client comes to me, I've had these experiences in the past, man, where I met with a client or a prospective client. And they're like, Garen, yeah, we want to go with you guys. We're, you know, we're comfortable with your company. We, you know, we read you up online and da da da. I'm just like, okay, cool. Get the mess, get all the details. Yeah. And they're like, Garen, if you can get that contract over to us as soon as possible, I loaf. Uh huh. Because it came easy. Mm. I knew that they wanted us, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I was just like, we got it in the bag, man. We, let's let's put together a proposal for them. Feeling myself a little bit, you right? Know, right. Didn't get the client mm. because I dropped the ball. Mm. I didn't stay hungry. Mm-hmm. But then when the person comes and they give me that poker face and and I know we can help them, mm-hmm. but they give me the, I'm like, yo, let's let's get it. We get that thing together, mm-hmm. get a competitive bid, send mm-hmm. it over and we're, mm-hmm. you know, we're doing our thing. So I say, if if God showed us what we were going to get, yeah. we're going to be all chill, man. Yeah. You know, because you don't have to work for it. Yeah. I'm going to take it there to that, those relations, when we're back, you know, younger, where you know you were gonna connect with this one person, they made it so easy for you. You didn't work. <laughs> what, what are you saying? No, nah, I'm saying what, I, what, I've said what I've said, what you, Sean. What I ain't going talk, into no what details. You, what are you talking about? I have about, said Gary? what I've said. All right? I don't understand. You can figure it out. How you want to figure it out? <laughs> you said you saw somebody when you were young. You mean like a, a, a young lady? I'm talking female? about. A, I'm talking about a prospective client. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that we were going after, and it didn't work out. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so I said that all to say, like, like God can't reveal to us everything, mm-hmm. because we will, we'll loaf, man. We'll, we'll, yeah. So you got to let us stay connected to Him, because if we know it, we're gonna be like, you said you gonna give it to me, so why am I even stressing you? Mm-hmm. And He mm-hmm. wants to have that relationship with us, mm-hmm. you know, in the same way that we want to have that relationship with our kids yeah. growing up. So that's that's how I'm learning to manage. Not just my business, but the family and everything. So let's try to answer this question before sure. we go. Because you asked me this question in the beginning about balancing the family and balancing your work. Yeah. And yourself. Yeah, and yourself. Self-care. Yeah. Those three things. And you know, you know, there's a calling in each area. So there's a calling to take care of yourself. There's a calling to, you know, take care of your business. And there's a calling to take care of your family. Not, not of course, not necessarily in that particular order. Right, right. You know, but how, how do you, 
how do you do that? Because, you know, like the um, thing we were listening to was saying, like, listen, you want me to bring home money. You want me to work, yeah. right? You want me to be successful. Yeah. So if I'm home, then I'm like thinking, okay, well, I'm not being successful on my job. Then if I'm at my job too long, then my home is like, well, you're not spending time with, 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 with me. Yeah. How do you have you found out where that balance is? Yeah, here? right. So, so I've been recently listening to um, not recent. I, I still listen to him, but Jim Rohn. Oh yeah. He talked about this whole idea of when you are at work, be at work, focus in on that. When you're at home, be at home. Yes. Don't even bring work home or none of that. Same thing with your kids. Same thing when you're spending the time with yourself. Mm-hmm. Cut it off. Be present in that space. Focusing on those people, those things, what's needed there, and mm-hmm. leave it alone. Otherwise, if you're at work and you think about home, you're not going to give your job what it deserves, and vice <laughs> versa to all of those things, man. So I, I have been, I've been working on that. So when Friday comes, like when Friday afternoon comes through Saturday evening, mm-hmm. I'm present with my family, man, mm. and I'm just focusing on them. We're thinking about things to do. How are we going to hang out? How are we going to spend time? My wife and I, we go out for breakfast every Saturday morning just to, you know, that's our together yeah. time type of a deal before we get the day started. So who watching, who's watching your kids on Sabbath morning? Um, morning? <laughs> so before when mother, <laughs> my mother-in-law was here, right. that was working out. Mm-hmm. Since then, you know, I got my sister, mm. you know, she helps out. She's around the corner. I got some other friends, they're around the corner, so they help out. And sometimes we just all go out. So I can drop my kids. Since you got the daycare, ha- not the daycare, the babysitting service happening at your home you know, on Sabbath mornings, <laughs> I just bring my three well, over. Why you don't pick another day? <laughs> <laughs> pick another day <laughs> type of a deal. But it's critical though, man. I mean, I spend, oh, and I will tell you this. So every October, I've been taking these for the past three or four years. I've been taking these solo trips, right, where I go out west or I go to like the mountains, go hiking. I went to Asheville. Um, I'm planning on going out to Utah. Just me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have to check in with the wife. Mm-hmm. I don't have to call. I don't have to worry about anything. I just go. And dude, that time spent with just me. Mm. And and I get like an Airbnb, something very simple. I like like I like modern, just you know, modular type spaces. So my wife, she finds me a really nice place. It's comfortable. It doesn't have to be like over the top. Just comfortable, man. And I rent me a car and I just go. I take a book or a couple books and I just go. In the middle of the night, if I feel like I want to get up and go anywhere, I just go. And I don't have to think about, ah, I got to check in, make sure that the wife knows that I'm okay or anything. Mm. Out of respect and courtesy, I do, but it's not required. It's the best, the best every year, dude, every year, oh, ah, the Sounds best. Good. So the key is, since all three are important, yeah, where Ever you are in that space, you got to give it all. Because my biggest problem is, and my wife, like, she says, I would just want to take your phone and throw <laughs> I'll be home and I'll get into bed, yeah. but I'm looking at my phone. Yeah. And so the advice is, man, put that phone down. Yeah. Just be here with me for a moment. Right. Bro, be there in that space. Be present. The work ain't going nowhere. And we think it will. But if something happened to us and we went to the hospital, the work would get done or not. Right. So that's... That's my thought, man. Uh, hopefully that's helpful to you. It has been to me. Hopefully yeah. helpful to people out there. But these are some of the challenges that you know we're facing on a day-to-day basis, being entrepreneurs or being businessmen with a family and having to take care of ourselves. That's how we do it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm.